Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, Money and Politics reporter Kyle Mullins. Kyle, thanks so much for joining me. Always great to be here, Brittany. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's running for president as an independent, announced his running mate, someone who has no past in politics. Her name is Nicole Shanahan. So first, to start off the conversation, who is she? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this was uh, an announcement that uh, Kennedy made on Tuesday. Shanahan is a Silicon Valley lawyer. She's 38 years old. Um, so this is definitely a younger pick than a lot of the vice presidential picks that we tend to see. Um, she grew up uh, in a low-income family in Oakland, California. Uh, she talked about in her, in her introduction how her family relied on welfare and food stamps. Um, she went to college in Washington and uh, law school in the Silicon Valley area. She worked in patents um, as a patent attorney for a little while. Um, she also, uh, in traditional Silicon Valley style, uh, had a startup. Um, where she uh, tried to, uh, the company was trying to use AI to speed up the patent process. Um, that was eventually bought out by a company. It didn't seem to do too well. It was eventually bought out by a company that um, is now bankrupt. Um, and she now runs a nonprofit. Uh, well, and then, of course, she's been picked as vice president uh, on an independent uh, ticket. So this is really a, um, again, kind of an unorthodox pick. I think I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more. But, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about why Kennedy, uh, we think Kennedy probably picked her. Yeah, let's talk about the unorthodox part of this pick. I mean, she is young. She is not a household name. And when there were names being floated around for his potential VP pick, a name that uh, was floated was uh, Aaron Rodgers, who's a football player, more of a household name. So is this pick surprising? Yeah, I think that's a really that's a really great question. On the one hand, it's not enormously surprising. There was some reporting in the days leading up to the announcement that Nicole Shanahan was going to be Kennedy's pick. Um, so walking into the announcement, it wasn't like we were all waiting with bated breath to see who exactly he was going to pick. The New York Times and a couple other outlets had already broken that story. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, anything is a little bit of a shock when it comes to the Kennedy campaign. We're talking about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, most known for being an environmental lawyer and a purveyor of conspiracy theories, um, and also a scion of the you know the Kennedy family, uh, running for president as an independent in a year with two historically unpopular and uh, you know a historically unpopular incumbent and a historically unpopular uh, challenging party nominee. Um, anything is a little bit unexpected in this environment. Anything is a little unexpected, including a VP pick who has no past experience in politics. Has she laid out her goals? Has she said why she wants to make this foray into politics? So notably, this isn't actually her first foray into politics. Um, she was a big Democratic donor uh, as recently as 2020. She gave uh, tens of thousands of dollars to the Biden campaign and to other Democrats that year. Um, but she, she, in this uh, speech, she laid herself out as sort of a disaffected Democrat, somebody who had who believes that the party was um, becoming more uh, interested in sort of a corporate agenda um, and corporate capture of government agencies. Uh, and she also laid herself out as somebody who was going to promote peace and stand up for the poor, something that she argued Democrats no longer do. Um, and so much like Kennedy, uh, I think she's making an appeal to people who are not really interested in either of the two parties and what they stand for right now or who see the two parties as too close to one another for their comfort. When she was making this speech on Tuesday, did anything else stick out to you? Anything else of note? I've watched Biden rallies, I've watched Trump rallies, and now I've watched an RFK Jr. rally. And I think the most notable thing is the topics of discussion are quite different. Um, of course, they're gonna, they're, you know, they're, they're gonna mention some stuff. Uh, RFK Jr. talked about the border. Um, Shanahan talked about um, the importance of, again, standing up for the poor, for example. Um, but there are other issues that they're talking about that are just not really discussed in the mainstream of American politics. Um, something they both focused on a lot was what they call the chronic disease epidemic. Um, they really lean into these somewhat fringe theories about chemicals in the water supply, um, the effect of electric uh, devices on our, uh, you know, on our biology. Um, and of course, talking about big pharma, um, uh, you know, RFK Jr. has consistently talked about anti-vaccine, uh, you know, uh, pushed anti-vaccine narratives and misinformation. Um, and Shanahan did lean a little bit into that as well. Um, she, at one point, I'm paraphrasing here, but she basically talked about how she really hates watching kids get shot after shot after shot. Um, and uh, that's, 
that's, you know, again, lending credence to these anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. There's really no evidence to back up a lot of the stuff that, that she or Kennedy is talking about here. But um, those are the kinds of things that they're leaning into in their campaign. And it's not just Shanahan, it's not just Kennedy. It's also all of the speakers that came before them. Many of them were talking about these health issues, these chronic health issues that they attribute to a combination of big agriculture, big pharma, um, and uh, big tech. Kyle, obviously we are Forbes. We love talking about money here. You are in the money in politics team. So this is right up your alley. Without further ado, how rich is Nicole Shanahan? How much is she worth? Well, I have to caution us there. So uh, me and my co-reporter Phoebe, um, we're not putting, we're not calling this an official valuation. Um, we just don't have enough information yet to officially make this a Forbes declaration of, or an estimate of how much someone is worth. Um, what we are saying is we think we know where she got a lot of her money. Um, my colleague Phoebe did a lot of digging into SEC documents, um, and she reports on Sergey Brin, who is uh, Nicole Shanahan's ex-husband um, and the, one of the, I think, I think at this point he's in the top 10 richest people in the world, um, co-founder of Google, um, and found some evidence that helps us determine just how much she might have gotten in that divorce in 2023. Um, I'll, I'll let people read the story to get the full details, but we're estimating that she got about $400 million worth of Alphabet stock, at least, from that divorce. Um, assuming she's held on to or sat on a lot of that, uh, you know, it, it, she, she's got a pretty substantial fortune there. So how did she amass this fortune? Was it simply being married and then getting divorced to Sergey Brin, who is one of the top wealthiest people in this world, or was it from her time in Silicon Valley? What does that look like? So our best estimate of where she got this wealth is really from her divorce. Um, we don't think that she made a substantial portion of it from her nonprofit that she runs, from uh, her startup that she founded a while ago, or from her work as a, as a lawyer. Um, the $400 million is a lot of money, and uh, that's a lot of Alphabet stock, that, uh, which is the parent company of Google, uh, a lot of Alphabet stock that, that she potentially got from that divorce. Her running partner, RFK Jr., as we all know, is really part of one of America's most famous families, a political dynasty. How does Shanahan's wealth stack up to his? If she did get all, all, all this stock from Sergey Brin uh, during that divorce, uh, we're talking about a uh, you know orders of magnitude more wealth than than RFK Jr. Um, we estimated last year that he's worth about 15 million dollars, uh, and a lot of that is actually from his wife, uh, who is famed actress Cheryl Hines. Um, so she she could potentially be worth far far more than, uh, than 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 her running mate. I am curious a how her potential fortune impacts the campaign and how much money RFK Jr.'s campaign has compared to both the Trump and the Biden campaigns. Absolutely, that's a really key element here. So uh, the Kennedy campaign has raised about $28 million so far. That sounds like a lot of money until you compare it to the Trump and Biden campaigns. Trump has raised about $99 million and Biden has raised about $127 million. So we're talking about significant multiples more than the Kennedy campaign has raised. Um, and all these numbers are as of the end of February. Uh, additionally, the Kennedy campaign only has about $5 million on hand. And because he's not running on a major party ticket, he's running as an independent, he has to fund a pretty expensive operation to get on the ballot in every state, uh, where the Republicans and the Democrats already have that operation basically complete. They're going to be on the ballot. So because of all of that, uh, you know, Shanahan might actually be able to bring a lot of wealth to this campaign. Um, because she is a candidate running now, she'd be able to donate potentially unlimited amounts to her own campaign. Um, normally, the limit is $3,300 for a single person to donate to a single campaign for the general election. Um, she could bring un, uh, you know, an enormous amount of money that could potentially fund this Kennedy campaign drive to get on the ballot in all 50 states. Kyle Mullins, I appreciate your reporting. You're welcome back anytime. Happy to be here, Brittany.